the Vegan Community um, panel, um, and we're going to talk today about like forming awesome vegan like um, community and including people from different communities. And um, I see we have like a lot of people in the audience who successfully do that where they live. Like we have the Red Hot Vegans, like the contingents of vegans from Austin, who are like amazing and have the best vegan community and I see Sean from Packy Vegan who has like the best vegan drinks in the world in London and you know sorry Jason um, yeah. <laughs> that's true that's true so we're going to talk about all that stuff and like how to be like support your vegan community um like with inclusion without like foolishness and like in and and that kind of stuff. So I'm Laura, and I have a blog, um, Vegan Saurus. That's like a vegan community blog in San Francisco Bay Area that kind of expanded out a little bit. And um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. Um, my name is Lee Chantel, and I run a website called VivaLaVegan.net. Um, and I also run a not for profit environmental awareness group called Green Earth Group. Um, I'm Liam Connor. I'm living here in Portland, Oregon. I run a vegan supper club here and also plan and help plan a whole lot of different vegan community events here. I'm Jason Das. Um, I do supervegan.com and then also uh, started Vegan Drinks, which is now, a, uh, it'll be our fifth anniversary this month, actually, next week in New York City. And the event has now spread to many cities all over the world, including Austin and London. Um, I think it's like 40 some. I should know the number. I don't, but. I started vegan drinks in your town. <laughs> Wait, should I talk more about vegan yeah, drinks? Yeah, maybe we don't have a moderator, so we're kind of. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about vegan drinks. Um, so yeah, vegan drinks started five years ago. Um, I'm what one of the founders. The other is, is Deborah Diamond, and it kind of started. We saw that other movements had these bar nights that looked kind of fun. Um, and drinking liberally was one, green drinks was another. I think these exist in various cities, but definitely in New York City they're, they're things. And uh, some of them you gotta pay something, some of them you have to RSVP, others you just show up. And it was more our type to just make something, people just show up and we'll see what happens. But what if people who work or care about vegan issues um, or animal issues just had a place to meet each other casually? It's not a conference, it's not a <coughs> talk, it's not an action. Um, we're just here to have a drink, and what's lower pressure than that? Um, and you know, unfortunately, what accidentally is introduced is, is the pressure of the dating scene, um, which <laughs> we constantly try to undercut, but it, it's it's a constant battle. Um, a lot of people just want to find another vegan to date, and they're showing up for that. Um, but. You know, there, if that's all it had turned into, we were not interested in running a vegan singles night, and if that's all it was, we would have stopped a long time ago. Um, that's not all it is. And it ends up, you know, we now get probably 100, 200 people every month at our event. It, it did start smaller. Um, we have a, a food vendor, which for years we didn't have any food. It was ju just about have a drink, super casual, show up 15 minutes, show up for three hours, um, whatever you like. The food vendor now it actually sometimes acts as a kind of incubation program for local new food vendors where it's like you can come do a, a pop up at our event. It's a one off, low pressure thing, sell some food. We get something to eat, people get to try out something they haven't had before. So that's been a nice way to kind of enable the, the nascent vegan food industry or the uh, food vendors in, in New York. Um, and then we also have a charity beneficiary every month. And this was a way for us to feel like okay, it's not just hanging out. Um, we are at least raising money for someone who's doing real activism. And we rotate those every month too. And there's a real range. Some of it's very small organizations, other are you know, the real big hitters of, of, of animal rights. Um, and, and we welcome them all and sort of you know, encourage them to do a raffle, sell merchandise, get their message out. But basically, we're providing the venue. And our job is provide a place where a lot of people want to show up in, in again, in a casual environment, you don't have to RSVP, you don't have to pay, you don't have to join meetup.com, like you can hear about it however you want, you can follow your friend, you don't have to be vegan, talk to whoever you like, that just this sort of casual approach, and I think it's worked great. Um, some people who are new to the city find out about it, they show up, they make friends there, and it's like, okay, I now have vegan friends in New York, which you might not find otherwise, so that we've provided a place where that can happen, it feels great. For me, it's actually provided a great way to stay more in touch with the vegan community in New York because 
I don't know how often I cross paths with some of these people otherwise. I'm glad I do though, and I'm glad that Beacon Drinks provides a venue um, where that can happen. So that helps me stay engaged, even when there's times where I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like going to a bar for a while. But then you see these people, amazing activists or, or people starting vegan businesses and, and stay engaged with that on a, on a real world level. And it's, it's so different from crossing paths with them on the internet. Um, and so that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. But um, we, we'll talk about it more later if we get questions. Can we ask questions? Or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, why not? Yeah, all right, questions about vegan drinks, please. I have a couple. So, yeah. your, what is your menu? Okay, yeah, so we are, we're in a, in a bar. Right now it's one, uh, it's called Fontana's. Um, they have a large back room that we can just take over. For us, finding a venue that would otherwise be open but empty is ideal because we want to be the only ones there. Um, on the other hand, we don't want to rent a space. We don't want anyone going out of their way for us. Um, I don't know how it is everywhere else, but in New York, there are plenty of bars that get a, a really strong late night crowd or a really strong week, a weekend crowd. But on a weeknight at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., they're empty. You know, it's maybe a cup, it's like two people, um, literally. Like, I've, I've walked by the places where we have vegan drinks with, on a different week, and it's like, there's no one in there. No wonder they like having us back. So so we don't pay them anything. Actually, at this point, we get us out of the bar, which we can pass on to the beneficiaries, so that, that works out great. Um, and you can bring outside food in? Yeah, I mean, that's going to depend on the venue. It's going to depend on local laws. It's going to depend on a lot of things. Um, and we try to outsource as much, much of that as possible, where you know, we, we make sure the venue is okay with stuff, we find the vendor, but then we kind of just say, you know, you're responsible for everything. Um, because it would just be too much work to like, really run it ourselves. Yeah. Um, so, does that answer your question? Yeah, we do, uh, Northwest Veg, we do a vegan CR here in Portland. It's, right. it's not a vegan drinks. It, if you would like it to be. Uh, yeah, we should. We should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to make notes. Cool. Yeah, let's talk more about that later. But yeah, it's, it's very easy. I mean, yeah, yeah and vegan drinks, it's, it's, a, it's a loose, we, we open source the concept, essentially. Um, we realized it worked. We realized that there should be more of them. We realized we didn't want to do the work of making more of them. So we kind of made some basic FAQs of how you might go about setting one up. And we have a page that lists and links to them all. But if anybody wants to start a vegan drinks in their town, that's on them, that's great. The downside of that is some of them have started, had two events and disappeared, and we don't even know they're not doing it anymore until years later. Um, the upside is something like, I mean, I think John in London's a great example. I think at the last Vita Vegan, where he was sort of complaining there was nothing like that in London, and I said, well, uh, let me tell you what you can do. And he, he started it, um, and they seem to be huge and amazing now. And we, how, how long have you been doing it? Uh, a year and a half. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, because it came from we started doing a vegan potluck first. Okay. Which became huge, and then there were people saying, "I want to come and socialize, but I don't know how to cook." So <laughs> <laughs> a perfect opportunity. But, but when you mentioned it to me, I was like, "Why have I thought of that?" So I do blame you for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great example of you know. London was clearly ready for it, but someone had to start it. Someone had to do it. Someone, you know, and finding the venue is, it is work. It's not fun. Um, but then once you have it there and it goes over well, that's a great feeling. And then, oh, sorry. Do you, should I go to someone else? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you have tips for small town? Like if someone wants to do yeah. that? Yeah. I've been wanting to do that in Bend for a while, but, you know, like they'll have green drinks in that there'll be 100 people there. Wow. But when we have green drinks, right? But when yeah. we have vegan things, we get a lot less, and I'm just worried about, you know, how you would, what, can you sustain that kind of thing in a smaller town? People have, um, you know, I haven't, like, personally been to all of these things, but from what I hear, um, I know some of the smaller ones, it would be a people sitting around the table in the corner of the bar, but that's great, that's fine, and maybe that's all it can be, and maybe some of them drove two hours to be there, because it's, it's that remote, um, and, okay, so that's, that's what it is, you know, what I would encourage you to do is, find a place where you can kind of own the space. So even if that means it's not at your very favorite venue in town, if it's a place where people are gonna be able to show up and know that the other people there are there for the same event is, is really helpful. Um, and you don't need 100 people. I mean, I think, yeah, I think people sitting around the table is kind of the wrong mo model, because I, I, that's not that casual, that's more like going to a meal almost. <coughs> but um, if, if you can get a couple dozen, you're fine. 
Um, and maybe get some ringers, maybe beg some people to, to be there, even if they wouldn't come on their own, but you know them, right? Yeah. Um, boost, to boost numbers at the beginning. But you won't know until you try. And, and the vegan drinks model does attract a different crowd than, say, a vegan food meetup or a potluck. There's, there's definitely people who like the one versus the other. And, you know, I'm more in favor, of, or I'm going to enjoy something like vegan drinks more than I'm going to enjoy a potluck. So that's why I, that's what I do. Okay, so what are the announcements? Where did that come from? Oh, thank you. I should have talked about those before. Um, so yeah, we, we do what we call shout outs. And I would encourage anyone who does a vegan drinks or a similar event to do something like this. This is another thing that at the beginning we didn't do. At first it was just show up, drink, maybe we had name tags. Um, and we realized people weren't finding each other necessarily. So someone would be there who's representing an amazing group or cause or is trying to find help to do something, and it could be activism, but it could just be, I want a vegan roommate, or this vegan restaurant is hiring, and somebody here should get that job. So we started what we call shout outs, which was, we try to keep it to 15 minutes, we don't want to interrupt the good times too much, um, where we turn off the music, try to get everybody to be quiet and listen, and people can sign up for a, literally 30 seconds to talk about their cause and what they're there for. And we try to keep it moving, but the idea is, it's like, okay, Sea Shepherd's up there talking about their latest action. I've heard of them, I'm really interested. Now I know that's the guy from Sea Shepherd, and I'll find him afterwards and, and make that connection. And again, it's that real person, real face talking to you in real time that is so different than anything on the internet. But yeah, making that time, interrupting the, interrupting the happy hour to do the announcements, it's a little bit of a buzzkill, but it also means that people actually find the right people that they, that they were there for. So I'm glad we do, we do it. Anyone else on that? How do you publicize it if you're not doing that? Okay, well, um, Demetrius does meet up for us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, we, we welcome other people spreading the word about it. So if the New York City Veg Meetup, and I think we've even had times where multiple meetup groups decided to do a meetup at our event, and that's great, that's fine. Um, it's a little confusing sometimes when people show up and they're like, I'm here for the meetup. And they're very nervous and expecting someone with like a red meetup sign. And we're not that. It's like, no, we have a, we, I, you know, I have a meetup account now, but that's recent and it's for other stuff. Um, so we, we definitely do Facebook. Um, you know, Facebook for better or worse, Facebook events for a lot of people are very useful. Um, it, we blog it on Super Vegan and Hopefully other blogs mention it too, which sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Getting um, Megan Rascal from Vegan Soros as our DJ is good, because now they blog about it all the time. Um, and, oh, it's also, it's a great way to like get vegan DJs a chance to DJ, so including me. Um, but, and it's, you know, we, we used to try to do sort of press releases like at um, magazines, like the, you know, the, the weekly papers and, and event magazines and stuff to list it. We haven't done that in a long time. Um, there are still a lot of people who would like the event who don't know about it, so more publicity wouldn't hurt. Um, but, you know, most of the publicity is internet, um, but it's not meet up. And the RSVPing, it's like, it's fun to know who, how, about how many people are going to show up, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's a bar, so anyone can come and go. <coughs> And they should, and we, we're not counting. Um, the the other thing I would say about that is now that we have the food vendor and the charity recipient, they're motivated to get a bigger draw. So some of our biggest events, it's actually not because of anything we as organizers did directly, but it's because the the charity beneficiary did a really good job rounding people to come out for this thing that was a fundraiser for them. So by by partnering in that sense, you. Kind of get someone else to, to drive up the numbers, even though you're running the event. Right. <laughs> um, so, like I said, I'm Maeve. I live here in Portland, where there are a ton of vegans. Like, I think people don't even really get excited when they meet other vegans here anymore. Um, like, you just see like herbivore shirts everywhere, and you're like, oh, I don't even get along anyway. But um, <laughs> when I lived in Idaho Falls which is where I went vegan when I was 17. That was sort of my first experience with vegan community, which I think sort of drives home how important it is to have that. I was a senior in high school. I had been vegetarian for a while. Um, and my friend Kate was also vegetarian. And she was like a year younger than me. She was like super cool and like 
had lots of like crime fig posters and like <laughs> they took a ska band. So you know, like all this people look for <laughs> a friend in high school. And then she went vegan and her boyfriend was vegan and there's this other vegan who they didn't like me, but we were you know, but like she was vegan, so that's cool enough. Um, and so then I was like, she, like she's a year younger than me, and I like I can't go vegan. Of course I can go vegan. That's stupid. And so then I went vegan, and then we all had like potlucks in the park with like dumpster food. We tried to start chapter food, not bombs, and no one came. So just the four of us still. So that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the thing is like I went vegan because there was this like tiny vegan community, and like because. Kate's parents always went out of town, so we got to like party at her place, and we would like use her vegan cookbooks, and like that's how I learned that you can be vegan. It's like easy to do because you are in like a small, crappy town. Um, so that just reminds me like how important vegan community is for like people who are not vegan yet, people who need help staying vegan. Like I know, I mean, like, I've been vegan for eight years now. I feel pretty certain I'm going to be vegan for life unless my like worldview or circumstances change drastically. Um, but like I also know like if I like was tempted not to be, I'm like, but like all my friends are vegan, what would I do? And that's a good motivator, right? Um, so here in Portland, I feel like I probably have a shorter attention span than Jason, where like <laughs> I don't have like one ongoing project that I do all the time. But I've definitely planned a lot of events here, um, mostly out of like weird late night drunken conversations or things that would be funny to do. Like um <laughs> Like a few years back, I learned that there was going to be a bacon fest near my apartment, which I thought was gross. My husband's husband was like across the street from where I lived. Um, and so with Jessica and the organizers of this conference, I was like, oh, this is gross. Why is there a bacon fest across the street? Ew. And then we were like, we should have a bacon fest. Like, why <laughs> would we do that? And we didn't actually, we didn't actually read anything about what bacon fest was. Like I, I did click on the description. I was just like, we're just going to go from the name and just do it from there. So we had like, um, we got a permit for a park, but like everybody bring like a fake in treat. We got Light Life to send us a bunch of like stuff. Um, because a lot of vegan companies, if you, you know, they want to be promoted, so if you just send them an email, we'll sponsor you. Um, we advertised it on like Facebook and Jess's blog and just like told our friends and veggie news picked it up on their website. And just because they had fun names, so they were like, sure, why not? And we had a haiku contest and like a big like display of like the history of bacon, just like the funny <laughs> stuff that people really, you know, I think they, you know, it was an interesting concept. People thought it was funny, and so they showed up. And there were lots of vegans there, and also lots of vegetarians with vegan curious, especially people who thought it was like a weird thing. Yeah. And it was a vegan potluck, and you know, we got and we had two of them. It's been a little while, I think we should bring it back because it's just like, and we, and we, talk, we talk about doing a sausage fest next, it's always a sausage <laughs> <laughs> um, That's just one example of like a way that you can like get vegans and the vegan curious and meet each other and hang out and have it not just be about being vegan, but also like something, you know, fun to make it engaging. Like everybody loves haiku contests. Um, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so everybody can do it. Like we had, we had someone with a degree in poetry as the judge, it was great. Um, um, I also here in Portland, like, I've been involved in things like Vegan Iron Chef, which is also something that's like, not just, you're vegan, let's hang out, which is also a great thing. Um, but like, a whole community of vegans working on a project for vegans, and also, you know, like, people who are interested in veganism. So we're just like, sort of to raise the profile of vegan food. Um, and just make a conversation, it's a huge event here. Um, I feel like, and then, is there a room that's actually like, I, I volunteered on it. And some of the like, bigger organizers are like at this conference, so I don't want to take too much credit. <laughs> so they're in the room like, oh, you didn't do that much work on that. But I existed, so. <laughs> um, also, like, I mean, my vegan supper club, I think, is a great way where, I mean, the goal of that wasn't originally creating vegan community necessarily. It was like, wouldn't it be funny if we got people to pay us to eat food in my living room? <laughs> that sounds like fun. I hear they do it in New York a lot. We'll just do it. Um, but it actually turned out to be like sort of a community event because like different people, mostly vegans, came to like eat in my living room and got to know each other and like had conversations. Um, it was just like little events like that to sort of like create more of a vegan community. Um, I also, I mean, for me, like the way I feel like I'm vegan community in Portland first is mostly through the internet. Like, how many people here are on the PBK? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are. <laughs> and like, 
like that's honestly a way where I've like not just in Portland, but like everywhere I go, I feel like you can always find people in PPK to be a friend. Like, um, and also, I mean, I feel like that's also when I lived in a place where I didn't have any vegans in real life. That's how you like, you know, if you can't have your real life community, you can have your vegan online community, and that's that's still great. We can get like turned into real life communities. I feel like that's really a really easy way to sort of create vegan communities. Find people on the internet who are talking about veganism, and they probably want to hang out with you in real life because they're probably looking for their vegans. Unless they live in Portland, just don't care and have like fatigue from <laughs> from eating vegans. Um, but I think one of the most important things about vegan community is like I think our goal should be to help people become vegan, help people stay vegan. I mean, I try to think about everything I do involving veganism. Like my goal is always I try I try to remember like my goal is to help animals, not to help vegans. And like helping vegans helps animals, but like if you just have an exclusive like vegan club. You're not helping animals, you're just hanging out with vegans because that's fun. And it is. But like if you're not open to people who are like curious about veganism or like want to learn more about it, then you know, you're not making the movement bigger. You're just hanging out with your friends. Which you know is fun. But it's good to sort of like keep the bigger goal in mind. That's my skill. <laughs> um I think that's totally true, like um Inclusion. I think a vegan community is a really good thing to kind of like solidify your veganism and like you can be around vegans and like talk about like like mock meats for you know two hours and it's like super fun but then you can go into the world and just be an awesome vegan ambassador and that builds vegan community. I was thinking about like the Bacon Festival like the very first thing before I had vegan tourists and everything is I put together um, because I was writing for a lot of food blogs that weren't vegan food blogs, but I would just be the vegan voice on the food blogs. And it was always really great. Like a lot of people were really curious and asking questions. A lot of people were assholes, but like, you know, it's the internet, so it's what a happens. Lot of people were assholes. That's what happens. <laughs> but we put together um, a trivial pursuit game where we played with real pie, but all the pie was vegan. So it was like really cool. We had a bunch of people who came and we like talked about like veganism and and stuff like that, but it was like a super fun just like game of trivial pursuit with pie. So like there's lots of ways that you can build a community that's inclusive of other people that's not um, it's not just about being like vegan and talking about mock meat for five hours, but I think you need you kind of need both. You need like a really like a safe space to because being vegan on the internet is not necessarily a safe space unless you're on the PPK. Or, um, so you need like those kinds of things, but you need to be able to also go into the world and be like, being vegan, I'm like a normal person and I'm also vegan. It's not like my number one identifier. It isn't for me, it's just one of the things that I am. And it's one of the things that a lot of people can be. And so if I'm out there just being a person who's like a decent person, and it's like, oh, well, why are you vegan? And then I can have maybe a 20 minute conversation and someone might not go vegan the next day, but maybe two years down the road, like they'll encounter more and more reasons to be in this world. So just by being like fun and inclusive, it's a really good thing for veganism in general. Um, okay, so Viva or Vegan um, .net, my website is um, mostly like a community online, but I think I'll um, talk about Green Earth Group. Um, it's an environmental awareness group that focuses on vegan education and um, we I've put on a couple of festivals in Brisbane in Australia where I mostly live and um, we had like three to four thousand people come and um, the whole idea with um, Green Earth Group and the festival in particular was to market to the masses and the mainstream because at that stage I was sick of um, preaching to the converted and um, which I sort of changed my mind on that um, going um, on a few years because um, I still think vegans don't know everything, even though we think we do. It's you know really good to still attend things that are predominantly just for vegans, so that you can educate yourself about other things you may 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 not know. We may think you know, and um, so Green Earth, um, we we did two festivals, and now we just do smaller events. So um, at the festival we had um, like a kid zone, so from 10 to 4 we had um, children's entertainers and face painting and things like that. Um, that was a really busy section, so I think we need to focus on the kids and to educate the kids and get them you know, connected to everything. And then also you need to educate their parents, so when they come home and say they want to be vegan, their parents don't completely freak out. So we had a lot of um, education things as well for, for the adults. So we had um, 
food there, we had a lot of speakers, we had a video zone, and we had competitions for art, fashion and film. And um, we also had music on the main stage because I come from a music background and we had spoken word performance. So um, for me, um, with any event or promotional marketing, I just think outside the box, how many people can I actually get to and um, focus particular things on that market. So say the kids zone was the families and the kids zone. Music um, was promoted to you know, um, maybe more alternative people or the teens. And then you also get their fan, fan base as well to come along. And um, so it's just those people that they that all these different areas actually bring to the event. Um, and we had uh, 50 to 100 volunteers. And um, Green Earth Group is a grassroots um, you know, community sort of group. And um, I, I run it just because I'm good at organizing and delegating and stuff like that. And um, it's, um, I like to hand over things to people as well though. So while I'm away, um, we have lots of things that other people are running. And um, I think that's really important because I had complete burnout up to my second festival and you need to really sort of take a step back and just like for me, myself, it was just get involved with things other than animal rights, veganism, music and writing and stuff. And for me, that was um, Australian Football League, which is AFL. So I follow my Brisbane Lions team, but we lost last night. Um, and um, then, um, so at the moment, all the things that we're doing now, um, we have various events. So each month we have at least two to three events. So every month we have a video screening and we have a grocery store called um, The Green Edge. So similar to like Food Fight here. And there's, it's just new, they've just moved to a new location and there's a space there that we can use for video screenings. And then people can come early, they can have something to eat because we do it on Thursdays when they're open late for food. So they can have something to eat, stay around for the video and you know, learn, learn something. Um, we have, um, I'm, I'm not really into the social aspects of vegan, for veganism like potlucks and things like that, but a lot of people are. So um, I've organised, there's a lot of potlucks and we've got some that are north side and some that are south side so people from different areas can actually go to these different events. Um, we have outreach and leafleting so we have various people um, speaking to the public and giving out information. Um, we do um, various bake sales as well so we get volunteers to make to make food and to give them out and um, you know, focusing on environmental stuff as well, so not using plastic and things like that when we're there. Um, we do social trail walks. One of um, our members is um, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro <coughs> at the end of the year, so um, she's organising that. So every Sunday, the last Sunday of every month, everyone goes on a social trail walk with her because a lot of people um, in the vegan movement, there's not that many sort of health aspects or athleticism and things like that. Um, we also have organised letter writing, so every couple of months we have letter writing and everyone that comes there brings their own campaign and they talk about that and we go through why it's important to them and how they can get involved to, to stop, like for example we have Greyhound Racing just in, in my local area. Um, we were talking about before at our, our past panel about um, the Food Empowerment Project's chocolate um, list, like anti-slavery chocolate list, um, and um, whaling, just whatever, anyone who comes and whatever they're interested in. We have some people that donate stamps, so then people can just write a heap of letters to different people. We've had a lot of success with that, in particular with getting, um, um, like, you know how um, animals are sold for pets, like puppies, um, cats and dogs and stuff like that and we had a, a campaign where we um, messaged and emailed and wrote to um, places like, um, uh, like I, I actually am trying to think of what would be a similar thing over in America, but um, places online that sell animals and advertise it online and um, we actually got them to include something when people buy it, just information about, you know, make sure you contact the person who's selling it, maybe ask these questions. And that was really cool because um, not many people had, places had that before. Um, and also getting vegan food into certain restaurants that didn't have vegan food, um, which I think is really good outreach. Um, if you go somewhere with your family or your friends and there's nothing there for you to eat, this is a really good opportunity to 
encourage people um, to find out more about the vegan diet and then the lifestyle and to get something that you can actually eat when you go to the place. And um, we also do portable workshops. So a friend of mine um, has a, he's, he's put it on the back of a bike and it all folds up. So you can just like cycle it wherever you want to have a workshop. So that just gets all set up and we do like composting and recycling and um, all different things like that. So yeah, we have various, various sort of events and um, with Green Earth in particular, the festival in the beginning, um, it was more about um, engaging everyone from a grassroots um, area and we had regular meetings and I would suggest that if you're putting on an event um, you need to include people and it's getting people involved and finding out what their passions and their skills are because if, if you tell someone to, you know, can you organise a letter writing event every month and they don't care for letter writing at all and their grammar is not very good, then they're not really going to be following through with that. So if you find out what all different people like, and you can you can really use that to their advantage, your advantage, and obviously the animals and our environment. Um, and um, that I also on um, Green Earth Group Org, I have this um, leaflet called Be the Change, and it's something that we give at our meetings, and it's just like write down what you're passionate about, the things that you're good at and the things you'd like to change in the world because I think, you know, by using our skills and our talents and working together instead of like creating um, like divisions in the community that we can really move mountains and that might be naive or whatever but that's what gets me through. And um, and that's um, that's all I think and just lead by example to, um, you know, just inspire everyone that you can, everyone you come in contact with. And um, with Green Earth, we're, it's very inclusive. So we had volunteers that were, you know, grandparents to their grandkids, you know, and it was, it was all about um, listening to people. And I think if you if you actually want to do something and you want someone to give you advice, you really have to listen to it. That's like, you know, really important. And we had meetings, and you know, for like the beginning of the festival, I had this list of everything I wanted. Um, like we needed a say a stage manager, we needed a kid zone manager, we needed people to look after the videos and just went around and said these are the things we need and then by the end of the meeting we had everything covered and I think it was just really beautiful and um, and yeah it's just yeah working together, um, respecting that everyone has their own way of doing things, everyone um, has their own things that they find important and the things that they really want to give a lot of um, attention to. So for example some people like bake sales more, some people like the food aspects, um, whereas I'm, I'm more from an education sort of thing and um, and that, that's also online. There's so many different things you can do offline and in person and don't think that one's better than another and don't think that whatever you're passionate about and whatever your skills are, don't think that that doesn't make a difference because it does. Um, I have a question for the panelists and then also for the audience. Um, I am curious, like, how do you make community events successful for veganism? I think that's probably a question that a lot of people here have. Like, some vegan drinks and vegan bake sales are so great. Like, tons of people are there, everyone's like talking and like meeting friends and you know, all this stuff. And some suck. Like, some, <coughs> like, in, in it, I really think like a lot of it has to do, some of it has to do with the area, but like the ones, like the vegan drink in San Francisco, like, and this is partly my fault, was a failure. Mm -hmm. Because, and but if you're like, you're the San Francisco Bay Area. Like, we should not be failing in vegan <laughs> drinks, you know? So, um, but our vegan bake sales were really crazy successful. So, and I think like a lot of what Leah was talking about, and Leah was talking about just like being creative about events. Like, you don't have to necessarily do a vegan drinks or a vegan bake sale in your area. Think about something that you love and that would promote veganism to the widest community possible and then like kind of latch like make that your thing you don't have to like if you want to like vegan drinks is great because it's established or you want to like have like oh well I have all this you know help and all this stuff but you might be like well actually this thing is more interesting to me like I'm gonna go you know from this angle so I think it's all about like being really creative but I'm wondering like how do you make a successful community event if you, you know, said like, two, two things that I actually consider in opposition okay. one is something that you're really passionate and excited about and the other is what's going to appeal to the widest variety of people those might not be the same thing. Yeah. And I guess I would say do the one you're excited about because unless it depends on a huge amount of people being there, maybe it does, 
at least you had an event that you thought was fun, and the other six people who showed up thought it was fun too, and yeah. maybe you won't do it again, but yeah. you got to have your vegan whatever theme party. Um, the other is trying to reach the widest variety of people, which I often find sets up for disappointment because a lot of people come there who, you know, I'm not that crazy about, yeah. and, or maybe didn't get it, and it's like, okay, they showed up because there was free food. Super, but we didn't actually get done the goals that I hoped. Um, my best advice, if you want the most people, is free food. Um, yeah. It's also the best way to lower the quality of the people who will be there, though. So that's that's a trade-off. <laughs> um, and and how you play that balance as a as a vegan event organizer is you know is a, it's an art, and um, you know I encourage you all to, to play around with it. But in my experience, free food gets the people out, but they're not necessarily the best people. Um, and yeah, I, you, you know, you say a successful event. I don't know what that means. I mean, how do you, what, what makes for an unsuccessful event? I think, like, everyone's been at unsuccessful events. Like, you know what that feels like. If there's, if no people show up. It's, mm -hmm. You know, if it's, you know, a successful event could be for people who, like, totally hit it off and you're like, now I have a vegan community that I never had before. And then a successful event can be like 100 people were here and no one talked to each other yeah. and everyone stood in a corner and drank their drinks. Yeah. So I wonder, like, probably a lot of people want to know, like, how do you create an, how do you, I know that there's no formula for it, but just talking about, like, how do you create an, an environment of inclusion? Like, that's, like, that people want to be a part of. Like, I think that that's, like, one of the things that we grapple with, right? Because it's difficult. A lot of it has to do with who you are yeah. as a person well, and, and playing I, to your strengths. And a lot of it is also, when I mean, you say inclusion, but often the way to make a lot of people feel, feel most included is to be actually really exclusive. <laughs> and, and that bothers me um, because you do create something that's around, say, a subset or a subculture. Um, so the people who are there are, you know, really into it. You know, you do your, your like, punk rock vegan carrot cake party. The people who come to that, you're going to love them because it's other people who like punk rock carrot cake. Um, and that's important to have. It is. It vegan is. punk rock carrot yeah. cake. But there's going to be a lot of people out there who love vegan carrot cake who are not comfortable with punk rock. There's going to be a lot of people who love vegan punk rock who hate carrot cake. This is, this is a great example. Um, and there's going to be a lot of people out there who are vegan generally who don't care about either of those things. And they say, that event's not for me. Um, and it's your choice as an organizer whether you want to chase the, you know, you would say, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Some would say that's a really inclusive event, and others would say that's a really exclusive event. We're talking about the same thing. Um, but, okay, so this is a question that I got when I first started doing the San Francisco Vegan Bake Sales, was why don't you call it Bake Sale for the Animals? Why does vegan have to be in the title? I find that excludes me. I don't want vegan baked goods. I want to, but I love dogs and cats. I love animals. Like people who are theoretically love animals are not vegan. There's tons of them. Everyone knows tons of people who love animals, but they're not vegan. So would they go to a vegan bake sale for the animals and not, or go to a bake sale for the animals and not a vegan bake sale? Like, I think it's all about like what's the choice that you want to make. But like thinking about like okay, who does this include? Who does it exclude? Like, and is there a place for both? I I want both. And then you have to work on who your target audience is. Um, if you're just, you know, having something for vegans, sure, use the name vegan. But um, for Green Earth Group, I didn't use the term vegan because for, you know, whether it's good or bad, the majority of people think vegan is a horrible word. And if they think they know what it is, they've got a bit of a distorted view of what it really is, you know. And um, so we used Green Earth because it was an environmental thing. We wanted people to to um, learn about the environments as well because I, I think the environment, animals, animal rights, health, fitness, all that is, it should be all together and all of those things should be promoted just as much as, as anything else. And um, so that was that was what we did and we have Green Earth Group bake sales. And um, what Jason was saying before about, um, you know, the, um, with people and like, you know, you have to work out what what you need from it. So say, I'm actually giving a um, talk, if anyone's in Minnesota, um, for the Critical Animal Studies um, Conference, I'm giving a talk about staging effective events and engaging volunteers. So I'm giving a workshop for an hour on that. And um, it's, it's really important that you work out, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to achieve it, and this is what I want to achieve. So you need to set, set maybe like, top five things, like you want to connect with vegans in your area, 
you want to um, meet someone you haven't met before, you want to educate people to something they haven't been aware of before, you want to make sure that you get as many different ages and different classes, different ethnicities, different anything that you can in that area. You want people to use public transport to get there. Like there's all these different things that you need to work out what's the most important thing for you. And also I, I feel, um, I feel like, I've, I've just been in Asia for six months and I spoke at quite a few events there and a lot of people were like, I'm gonna do this event and I'm gonna get 200 vegans by the end of it. And I'm like, yeah. ugh. And I think, um, if you sort of detach yourself from the outcome as well, I find that really helps me just to, you know, be at peace with stuff and, you know, plant the seeds and get the education out there. But don't be so upset if, like, only four people come because those four people could be, like, amazing people that really start something happening. It's, you know, um, quantity versus quality type thing. Yep. So, yeah. Can I just share a four person um, in jail right here? Um, success story. So I run a vegan, or it's actually vegetarian meetup. <laughs> it's me. Um, just outside of New York City, so not as, as big as me traces, but it had kind of fallen off the radar. There were two vegetarian groups that were disbanding. The organizer stepped down. So I stepped up and, and kind of started it, but it, there weren't events for like a year. So down the street from me is a non-vegan restaurant that has a meatless Monday. So I set it up, and I think the, the first one was this jail's moving to, to Colorado. I'm like, all right, we'll have a, we'll a meetup for her leaving. You know, mm -hmm. I said it up with some people she knows and stuff. So I, I think nine people are SVP and four came. So it's JL and Jody, who may or may not be in this room, and, and JL's husband with four people out of it. Now it's grown, and for the one I have in June, is there's 24 people signed up already. So these kinds of things kind of, you know, can persist. But I think, too, it was more like I wasn't terribly disappointed. I was like, oh, okay, there's just four of us. This yeah. will be fun. So I think if I just set myself up for expecting like 20 people and I need this for this to be a success and then that didn't happen so I gave up. But I really didn't give up so we've been doing it monthly since that was about November. So it's kind of been long, but I'm getting a lot more responses, a lot more people in the group and, awesome. and it's been really fun. And you need, you need to do that. That's what I say to volunteers all the time because they're like, I'm going to do this and they're so passionate and so into it for like three months. And then if they're only getting a few people to each of these events, they, they quickly lose um, focus with it and they quickly get really disheartened and it is disheartening if you put so much effort and money and enthusiasm and energy into something that you only get a few people that is but if you and it has to be like a regular thing like you know if someone has goes to the markets to sell their vegan soap or something you need to be at that market every saturday or every second saturday of the month you know you need to be there on a regular thing so that people know oh we're having this vegan meetup at this time oh there's letter writing every second month there's this there's that there's that you have to you have to that's so, like the number one key to successful blogging yeah. too is persistence like yeah. the first two years of being in Soros, like my my mom didn't even read like literally like, do you know what i'm saying like it took yeah. you have to stick with it like if but if you're consistently there and like okay i'm gonna blog two pieces a day or i'm gonna blog one piece a week or like you set your goals and you reach them then like you know ultimately like people will come it just it takes some time like you're like okay we started with four people and now like 24 people signed up and who knows what it'll be a year from now you know and like also the persistence and also the willingness to adapt like thinking yeah. like what's working what's not working let's you know let's i'm still here i'm still part of the community i haven't left but like i want to see like okay it works to have it at this bar and not this bar it yeah. works to have the bake sale on this corner and it works to advertise it this way and these blogs and through this like mainstream channels like so i think like those are two big things there's also because it's community use the community mm -hmm. you know if you're just one organizer and you're doing all the work I mean, I, so I don't think that's like, a good position yeah. to be in. And yeah. so try to find other people who, and if they're showing up, they're probably interested, and maybe they can do some of the organizing too. If there is money, maybe some of it can be their money too. Um, you know, and again, Commissioner Tom mentioned the, the money and the expense. I would say try not to invest too much starting up until you know it's gonna work, unless you've got money to burn. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to do stuff for free or really cheap or that kind of pay for themselves and, and start there. Is Laura's question about associating the word um, vegan with bagels? I think like it's a really positive thing to um, to start being able to associate the word vegan with helping animals. I feel like a lot of people who even like who know what veganism is don't like my answer question. Like why why what does veganism have to have to do with helping dogs and cats? 
like, even people are complaining to you and asking that question, like, I think that's a really good, talking about it. yeah, like, that's a good way to start people, like, thinking about that, it's really, like, why we do things like that, right? Oh, okay, and then we'll go down the row. <laughs> uh, this is a question for anybody on the panel. In the, um, in the spirit of being more inclusive, have any of you guys had any particular successes or tips for uh, making sure your community is really diverse? and reaching out maybe in communities that you don't spend your own personal time in? Or? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I that's something I think a lot about and, and worry about a lot. Um, and it's tough in the vegan world in general, even in, I mean, New York City, very diverse city, but even within, you go to a vegan event, and it's like, okay, it's overwhelmingly white people and overwhelmingly women. And like, that's true of, I think, at least American veganism in general. Um, Is that why you got into it? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's exceptions, but it's you know it's um there's you're sort of constantly aware of that if you're someone who notices these things. Um, one thing for me in you know anything I've I've tried to do in New York is not setting any and not setting up anything except for the vegan part. Um, I mean, vegan drinks is a little different. It's like you have to be okay going to a bar. You do have to be over 21, which I think is a shame. Um, you you have to think that you know sharing a drink or being around people who are drinking alcohol is okay. So in that sense, we're being exclusive and discriminatory. But in every other sense, I want it to be as open as possible. I don't want people to think you have to be into a certain kind of music. You have to look, have tattoos. You have to you know dress a certain way. And I think it's worked. Um, you know, I, I think we get a, a relatively diverse crowd. I think it could be a lot worse. Um, and actually, say, since we started doing the food vendors, that can help where it's like, oh, these guys do African food, I'm definitely getting them and I'm jumping out of the front of the line. So you can play a little affirmative action if, you know, the opportunity presents itself, but you can't totally will stuff into existence. Um, but I think, yeah, the, the idea is, for me, it's, it's very important that a vegan event or a vegan community, it should not be about anything except vegan. And as soon as you have your like vegan arrested development watching party, you're actually like narrowing your Venn diagram around like crazy. It might still be a fun party, but <laughs> I think um, like for me, one of the main things I do is no no charge for things. Like I try um, like the festival was free, so we could connect with as many people as possible, and um, I think that's really important. And also, you know. Um, so in Asia, I was giving talks, and a lot of them were at um, Buddhist places, temples, or owned that. And in Indonesia in particular, there's a large majority of Muslim population. So you um, say 70%. So if you're speaking somewhere in like a Buddhist area, you've completely narrowed the field to the majority of people that actually live in that area. So you've just got to you've got to think about all those things. It's like it depends on who your target audience is, but yeah, you've got to think about cultural sort of things as well. At, at like just I think getting the word out in like lots of different communities because like the second that you have like we have um, like a Filipino vegan community in the Bay Area and the second that one of the members of the um, group came to our first bake, bake sale the next one ten of them came and then it just made our community more diverse and awesome so like you know like plus you it's to and it's just I think like getting the word out and admit as many places as possible and just being like this is awesome for everyone. I agree with Jason, like this is just about being vegan, it's not anything else. It's, or it's just about like delicious vegan food or vegan drinks, like you know, and then everyone is invited, like not vegans and vegans. Like everyone come, please everyone, because I can't stand the same four people again. Like you know, so like just like being amplifying as much as you can. Uh, can I yeah. so I wanted to add on um Anita, my dear friend. But uh, I find one of the most challenging things as an organizer is having to call people on uh, sexism or homophobia. And I do it, there's no way I'm not going to do it. But you get 120 people in the room. There are going to be men saying stuff about women across the other side of the room. Or yeah. My friend Matthew from Portland came to Vegan Drinks in London and someone punched him in the stomach for being gay. I mean, that's an extreme example. But I, every, every event that I Hold, I have to confront maybe one, two, or three people about their behavior. And that's the way that I try to keep it inclusive, is by tackling the behavior, not mm -hmm. inviting more people into an un possibly unsafe space, but making 
defending, the, making the space yeah. safe, yeah. and then people feel comfortable coming and staying there. But it happens a lot, you know, like vegans are assholes too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we'll <leave them> <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, this was an add on to the like, including vegan in here, like advertisement or poster or whatever. Um, I noticed that uh, yesterday Coconut Bliss had like a little handout, and in their pamphlet thing, it was kind of addressing how. Um, fat is a bad word, but it's like coconuts are healthy fat. So mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking um, you could you try doing something, you know, like where it's like telling people that their concept of a certain word or um, kind of the negative connotation that comes Fat is not a bad word. Well, you could say, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, saying something like, you know, you have like vegan bake sale and then you have like, you know, a cat with a talk bubble that's like, it's not a bad word. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's it's something that's like, you know, cute and then something someone that's a great will look idea. at it and be like, oh, that's probably true. I'm, yeah. I'm going to respond to that really quickly because that's sort of a pet peeve I've developed. I feel like I don't, maybe I'm blessed and lucky and oblivious, but I don't actually encounter people thinking it's a negative word that often. Oh, I do. And yeah, no, and it's, it's Even so, in Portland, where it's like a very common demographic. So, I, like, like I, I have heard about country. this thing, but I feel like as soon as you put that, the, you know, cartoon on there saying that, you're actually undercutting it, because you're like, That's you're being like, oh, yeah, we're, not, we're nice. Um, <laughs> you know, instead you'd just be like, vegan. Done, yeah. you know, if that's if, and if that's I'm off sure putting. It definitely it's depends screw. on the area too. Yeah. I mean I'm I think somewhere you know, like the Bay Area where people have like very I mean, generally speaking, people have pretty like set opinions on like what they like and what they don't want to you know, yeah. be included in, you know, maybe it would work, but also in a place where there's a bigger vegan demographic where it's like a more common thing, people are like, oh, there's vegan things, that's cool, whatever. You know, it could it's all about that. knowing your demographic too. Yeah, like I is. yeah, yeah. Like, um, like I have a bunch of friends who aren't vegan, like probably everybody in this room. And um, I remember like a couple years ago I was invited to this dinner at this fancy restaurant that wasn't a vegan restaurant and like immediately like someone was like, oh shit, Laura's vegan. Like <laughs> like we can't go here. Like and I would like immediately was like, I could totally go there. Like I'll call ahead and make sure there's something awesome. And the yeah. chef's usually totally they stoked to make yeah. me something. And then like my friend Nancy was like, Laura's a cool vegan. Like, you know, like she you know, but I was like, all the vegans that I know are cool. Like yeah. exactly. you guys yeah. think that I'm the one vegan that's okay and then everyone else is pita. Exactly. You know, like yeah. that's not true. We're all mainly okay. Yeah. Like, you know, so I think that that's a cute idea, especially depending on the demographic. Yeah. And like, and I think Jason raises a good point too. Yeah. Yeah, no, and in this different There's context, we'll do awesome. different yeah. things. But yeah, I, I think sort of a, a, apologizing for being vegan yeah. is no, something no, no, no. Is something that does happen, and I find it off putting. So yeah. there you go. I, right. I think that's, though, coming from New York, though, yeah. also, you know, that's. You, there's Could a be. lot more vegetarian vegan places in New York, 200 or something, is it? Like something uh, like yeah. full on. Yeah, no, no. Oh. On the other hand, there's a lot more of everything in New York. Yeah, it's yeah. I think so, you know, you've got more um, of a population, you know. Like, I don't know that per capita it's any different yeah. than anywhere else. But, you know, it depends where you are. If people don't know what vegan what veganism means, it could be a really great um, chance for you to explain it in a non threatening, non judgmental way. But um, <coughs> like just the way the term vegan is at the moment, I think it's just been completely diluted in the past few years. And I think people see it as a diet or um, how to lose weight or you know things like that. I don't know, you know, if you if you can balance those two, good luck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. Um, so I have a couple of questions, but I'll try to like pare it down. Um, so before I would do like a lot of meetups on the PPK and it's just kind of like random like hey it's about that time, time to meet up, let's eat type of thing. Now that I live in New York City, like it's a more like there's just a ton of people and like a ton of vegans. So um, I ended up creating like a meetup group for people who wanted to like have brunch together, NYC veggie brunch. Um, but my, the, the thing that I kind of struggle with is like finding a platform I think I'm limited by using like meetup.com, so like, and I don't have a blog either. So like, I have a question as far as like platforms when you don't have like a popular blog, as well as my other question is about frequency of like meetups. So right now I'm doing like one every three weeks, but it's kind of like, it's hard to like gauge like what is like how often should. Do like, you like doing it once every three weeks? I I, I, I like do it brunch. once every three weeks. Yeah. I do it like every weekend yeah. if 
I could. Well, and but, Jason, is this not super vegan? Well, here's the thing. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't have a popular blog. Tell the popular blogs that mm -hmm. this is going on and that maybe they should mention you. And, you know, if they happen to be my, my popular blog, yeah. they might, they might um, s Would sleep on like it and slip up because they're lazy. Or, right. um, or they might even say, maybe you want to write the guest post because we're lazy. Or yeah. they might say, yeah, here we're doing a post about it for you. But, um, you could do a cross post on super vegan or vegan source. Or, or, or play them against <laughs> each other. Or we'll yeah. fight for you. Yeah. 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 No, seriously, like, you know, so. Reach out to Vegan Source, reach out to Super Vegan, um, reach out to, you know, to, I mean, whatever. I can go reach on. Reach out to Eater. Like, honestly, but, but, and more. Blogs like, too. you know, don't write a personal note because that does help a lot versus a press release. Um, yeah, discourage everyone. Anonymous press releases are the worst. Um, don't read you know, find, find a name and, and put it at the top or at least put the name of the site in, in your dear so and so. Um, but yeah, ask, ask to be noticed. Ask to, for people to, to, to link to it and like it. Um, and share share actual success stories. If you have done it and people came out and it was a good time, it, it, saying that is good because there are, and again, this may be a New York City problem, but everybody's starting something all the time. Right. And they think it's gonna be awesome. And oh my God, you know, here's my Indiegogo for my new restaurant that's gonna be amazing. Yeah. We've raised 200 <laughs> out of $200,000. And it's like, I'm probably not gonna want that because, you know, it, Everyone's got a little vanity project, so if you have a little bit of um, something going already, mm -hmm. that can help you get stronger press attention later. And I think that's with the square too. Like um, honestly, you can do so much like street street um, sort of work. Like put, do some like zines or some posters or something. Leave them on a bus, you know. Yeah, or like a brunch, put post like a sign. I've done like leaflets and stuff yeah. like that, but it's New York City, so yeah. it's just like no. it's not the same. People way. Like, see yeah. I had more success when I did live in Seattle. That yeah. doing that kind of stuff worked, but yeah. like I find it difficult, like in New York, being so big that like yeah. everyone has their vegan vegetarian project going on. And, and also another thing is why can't you work with something that's already established? Why does everyone have to create their own thing? Like there's so many um, there's so many ways that we can all interconnect and that we all just sort of come along together. But yeah, people tend to forget well, that. That's a very interesting thing. It's I mean it's a bad maybe not a great example, but what if instead of starting your own meetup you had done it as part of one of the existing meetups? Or what if instead of you know what if you had talk to one of the blogs about sponsoring it from the start, mm -hmm. so it was their event too. Yeah. And maybe that wouldn't work, but that's definitely something you, can, you can do. Try. try to reach out to someone else who's already in the space who maybe would think it's a cool idea and would sort of, let, if, if nothing else, lend their, their name and audience to it, but maybe would actually get involved. Of course, that can backfire too, and suddenly you, you have a problem. Uh, Demetrius. Two questions, but first, I'm happy, in New York, I run in my CV, you know, which is 1,800, 1,900 people. I'm happy to have another organizer, assistant organizer, do something through to your point. And you can keep your meetup if you want to pay extra money, whatever, and have your co-sponsor. There are, people always want stuff to do. That was one of the first things I heard nine years ago when I went to vegan meetup. They wanted something every night. I'm like, you pay Whoa. me, yes, and I have money to eat. Yes, I would buy <laughs> then, not now, right. every night. Um, so, so joining forces could, could yeah. work, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Like people, like you might grab some people, you might not want to do it anymore. There's a kind of gen and then just doing our own thing. It's, you know, it all just kind of can snowball. I don't, yeah. and I'm not the biggest by any stretch. And, you know, David Green has 5,000 people that come to the vegetarian, vegan, really. Right. Yeah. And it's all good. He comes to mind, I go to his, we find it every so often. And everyone else thinks you're the same thing, so. No, 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 no. Dan oh. Green is very tall and... No, I don't mean that they the same person. I, I just mean in terms of which, which meetup group they're in and no, no, how... No. We have a much smaller, I've learned to be happy with a four, even one person, 12, 24. He gets 100 people like this. This is about his size. It's actually, no offense, a small meetup for him. Mm. But he's doing a whole different thing. Mm. He's got more energy, a whole different thing. Yeah. <laughs> My two questions are actually for the room. How many people have not been to a veg fest? And then how many people have not been to vegan drinks or a vegan meetup? Thanks. You get a bed fest in Edmonton, Alberta, that'd be nice. Sure. <laughs> Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Well, one of the things I love about vegan drinks, and then I think you even have some stuff on one of your sites, Chantel, is 
people are happy to share the information. Like my task I was given earlier this week is, how could, I, how could Seattle start a vegan shop up or something like that? Yeah. And so I asked some emails going. People want to help, particularly vegans, uh, bloggers, not bloggers, organizers, any of those combinations. They want to share the information. They might need a minute, a week, a month to sit down and write down some really great notes for maybe just an hour. But it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. If someone says no, just ask another person. And I, I love helping people that help themselves. That's the key. And you learn stuff that you mm -hmm. don't. I think Jason shared a lot, and I'm sure this shunt you have some adventures. You don't necessarily want to see people make the same easy mistakes yeah. that are avoidable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. We learn things the hard way. Let us mm. tell you whether mm. it works or not. Also, just real quick to, to your question again. Um, show up at vegan drinks and do a shout out. Like, go to other events and talk up your event. Right. I went to a vegan drink just uh, last month. Did you do a yeah. shout out? No, I didn't do so, a shout out. Yeah. So I didn't know like that shout out happened. But you know, next, so, next yeah. time, you know, do it. And you know, it might not work, but somebody will tell somebody and, and word gets around. Go If it, you flyering maybe in Mushu's is, is futile, but go to the vegan shop up and flyer. Like, okay. Do we have time for one more question? Uh, so I'll try to be kind of quick with this. Um, one, one thing that we've sort of struggled in in our Austin vegan community is that, and I think it's an issue anytime you have this core demographic like revolving around this, this sort of, you know, small subject of, you know, uh, like in Austin, we're, we're sort of unofficially like a young kind of fun-loving kind of vegan crew, like and that's sort of our thing. Um, and so it makes it easier when there's like an ATX vegan drinks or um, when we have silly events, which we try to do pretty often. Like there's a caterer throwing a vegan party barge for the fourth year in a couple months. Um, but like people still want to have potlucks and restaurant meetups and that sort of thing. And since we have these, this sort of like very established crew of people who've met at these events, and they obviously become more cliquish and yeah. associate yeah. with people they really like, um, and meet up outside of the events and everything, then when new people come in, it's not that we don't want them, but what are some ideas you guys have of how to include these people and sort of break the ice beyond like alcohol at a social event or something like right. that? Uh, I say you have to speak to at least one new person every event. Yeah. And then um, if you have your friends, you hang out with them at the end, you mingle yeah. first. And I'm a you know, network mingler, sort of, uh, that's one of my things. But So it's like you start here and you work around the room and you just that you make sure everyone does that if they're in that little click yeah. beforehand. I know not everyone's good at that, but just one conversation, that's all. Uh, someone you I think those are activity is good. As someone who's like mm -hmm. not terrified to mm -hmm. talk to new people, like I won't do it mm -hmm. unless I'm being forced to. But if there's a game or something? Yeah, exactly. Like something to engage you. Because like obviously if I go into a room full of vegans I've never met before, like I'll probably leave not having talked to anyone. Yeah. I'll just probably leave them like five minutes later, honestly. So if <laughs> I'm forced to do something, maybe I'll make a friend, you know? Yeah. You guys, I feel like in Austin, like I visited Austin and like the vegan community was so rad. Like you guys went out of your way to like, you, I, I think you, whatever you're doing is good. Like you made me feel like, oh, welcome. Mm -hmm. Like That's welcome, good. this is all about like, well, this is our community, this is who we are. And then like, and it wasn't just because I was already like this vegan person who you guys kind of knew. Like there was tons of other people there that you guys were like, oh my gosh, come sit with us. Like I just felt like you were really, really like an inclusive group. Just like going up and meeting people and talking to people and pushing yourself to do that, I think it's really important. Yeah, it's really just like you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, no, I would say, I mean, uh, Lee Chantal and, and Mave's ideas are both really good. Like there are vegan drinks where I don't get to talk to my friends because yeah. I'm talking to the, yeah. the, new, the new stranger. Yeah. And th that's when I know I'm actually doing my job. Yeah. There's other times where I talk to my friends and didn't talk to the new stranger and I know I'm yeah. screwed up. I mean, we've tried like designating people like ambassadors to actually go yeah. out. Yeah, that's good.